Um, so this is the side that the cambium is lined up on. Here's our little seedling. And I this I, I did this in like October, so um, this is a, an actually an approach graft, not in an arch. See where I just cut together cut, cut cut the bark so the cambium kind of line up, stuck them together, and here's the the seedling. There was a failed in arch here. So I let it sprout back out with some new leaves. And then it has a branch over here. See, it branches at the bottom. So that's a nursing branch to keep the whole thing healthy. And it's actually approach grafting here. And I, it's hard to see, but I can see where it's already starting to fuse, fuse together, to grow together. So I'm gonna give it a couple more months, but I'll be cutting this off here. Mm -hmm. And that means that the carry graft will feed this root system. I'll be cutting it away from the carry mother plant here mm -hmm. and for a little while I'll allow this nurse branch to stay but I'll take the nurse branch and tie it down so that the carry is the highest point and that'll have it push out the most growth on the carry graft and once this is good and established I'll remove this and then you'll have a nice carry graft so that's one of the ways we can graft out of season mm -hmm. um, this far north. Do you find an arching or approach graft better which one in between is better for you? They're both similar? Um, generally, I'll do, I'll do an arch because below the arch, I'll have plenty of leaves to feed the rootstock. Mm -hmm. But this was a failed arch. So you'd have to do the other way around. It was a teaching in arch I did, and they didn't do it well because it was their first time. Right. So when we figured out that that failed, I did the approach because that's where the leaves were. Okay. So I'm trying to leave leaves and this nursing branch that, to actually feed the new root stock while the, the during the extended months and months that the graft is actually healing mm -hmm. together, uh, growing together. Um, it's good points. It, yeah, you got to keep that root alive. Good point. So you got to keep some leaves on it. So an approach allows you to keep leaves above the graft on your root stock, and an arch leaves keeps leaves on the root stock below the graft. So you got to have leaves for your root stock. So really the, the technique depends on where the leaves are. <laughs> yeah. Let's go by that. I like it. Thank you, John. Oh, wanted to show we just pruned the dead parts, the dead tips. Here, here, you know, lower down, there's a lot of intact tips where it's still going to fruit. There's plenty of, so again, I would prefer a frame so that my tips, which are where the flowers come from don't get frozen but um, even with the, the plant itself supporting the frost cloth there's still enough tips, tips to push out to flower and make fruit so you're still going to get a decent crop all right it looks so a lot looks so much better it only took us a few minutes a few minutes probably four you see where john is at you can see it's pretty big this is in Tallahassee, Florida. Uh -huh. This is not down south or central Florida. It's north Florida. But again, it's the south side of the house. There you go. So you're not, you're trying to say that this is from south Florida. It is on the south side of the house. It looks so much. See the new push outs for the flower buds. You'll have somebody say this isn't, this isn't real. And, and so uh, it was, we had a longer winter, so the, the we had the tree bagged for a long time, and you can see that the scales and other insects really caused some sooty mold. So is that from the sugars they were putting yeah. out? So because this tree was bagged for so long, we we didn't spray it. So it really needs some uh, some copper. copper. I'm gonna spray it with copper first, and I'm gonna spray it with some in insecticide after this rain. You know, probably some horticultural oil. Cool. Or spinosad or something like that. How much fatter would this trunk get if you keep this growing for many more years? It'll keep getting fatter. Um, once it's about in the 12 to this is a dwarf diameter range, I'm going to cut this tree down because I think it's too close to the foundation. And so what we're doing, actually, if you look over here, this part of the yard where we moved the hedge, um, we're going to go ahead and plant another mango out in the yard. To be maybe, so let it get bigger. And maybe just do a little bit. Maybe do one of those solar style frames mm -hmm. with a, a, a windbreak in it. Mm -hmm. to keep the wind off. So 
a good yeah, idea. We want another mango coming along because eventually this one will we'll have to go out. You know, five or ten years from now, this one has to go. Makes sense. But there is this one is pushing out more growth right here. Yeah, those are uh, those will, well, some yeah. of those will be flowers. They'll eventually there. pop a flower. You can see the bud starting to. Is it a flower? Look on the little corner. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a flower. Yeah. You can, yeah, you can see the carrot.